me see if I can. All right. Good morning, Dr. Eifler. How are you, sir? Good morning. How are you today? Doing very well. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, saw your interview with um, Runner's World on the ankle weights. Really fantastic, fantastic story. Great job. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's very kind of you. So I, I never run because I'm too fat, but if I do go running, should I put on ankle weights? Uh, not if you just got off the couch. You shouldn't. That would uh, be a little too much for you. Your body's going to be in shock by you running, period. So you don't want to add any more weight or stress to your body. You know, the, the article brought up some interesting points. Uh, you know, people who, who run usually are, are uh, addicted to it to some degree. It's, it's very, it's a lot of uh, positive feedback to them mentally and physically. And so they try to push themselves typically. And, and this is uh, something that came around before and now it's coming back again. And they're good and bad about it. So the, hopefully the article delineated those points that uh, in moderation, it's good. Start off light, start off easy, uh, but don't make it part of your everyday every routine because sometimes your body is going to be in shock. And when your body's in shock, that usually means leads to injuries and leads to problems. So just uh, listen to your body and, and try to you know take it in moderation. Good advice. It can be a fine line. I wish I wish we could get all of our patients addicted to running instead of some of the other things people get addicted to in this world. That would be wonderful. So one of the things that came up as a potential uh, injury by putting extra weight on your body when running was uh, what the author, uh, her name was Emily Schiffer, really, really a uh, great writer, but what she called um, patellofemoral syndrome. And I hear that term bannered about quite a bit. What is patellofemoral syndrome? And um, how, how would I know if I had it at home? So patellofemoral syndrome involves uh, and damage to the knee, and this is a knee with a femur, and this is the kneecap, and the kneecap has cartilage on the back here, and the femur has cartilage covering it, as you can see here, and then you have the tibia with the, with the meniscus and the ligaments down below. So patellofemoral is just involving the articulation with the patella and the femur. So if you look at the knee from the side, as you squat and kneel or run up and down hills or or bend down to pick up something, the kneecap is involved with the femur right here, and that articulation can get overloaded, like I mentioned. And patellofemoral syndrome is the overload of the uh, kneecap rubbing against the femur, and that overload can cause pain uh, because the cartilage doesn't like that added stress of the weights or just the extra activity. And so as that um, articulation gets beat up, it becomes painful. So Usually those patients will present with pain over the front of the knee because, again, this is the front of the knee. The front of the knee is here. Here's the back. So the front of the knee will hurt. It will hurt more with squatting, kneeling, uh, you know, getting out of bed, getting out of a car, going up and down stairs, if they hike, going down the mountain at the end of the day. Uh, so those are your typical symptoms. Maybe some swelling about the knee. Uh, aching if you sit at your desk all day long and meetings on the on the computer nowadays since we tend to be stuck at home. Uh, so I think if if you have those symptoms in the front of your knee with kneeling or squatting, that's what you're talking about with patellofemoral syndrome. And as far as treatment goes, usually trying to avoid activities with that knee being bent. So when it's bent all day long in your chair at, at work, uh, it, it's pushing on this articulation and it's like pushing on a bruise. If you push on a bruise, the bruise is going to hurt longer. Uh, if you can kind of lay off of it and have your knee more straight, try to avoid the squatting, try to avoid the kneeling, try to avoid stairs for a little bit. Maybe take some anti-inflammatories over the counter if it's okay with your primary care physician. And then, uh, you know, ultimately going to see a, a, a family physician, a, an orthopedic surgeon, or a physical therapist uh, and start getting that knee to feel better. Or even a chiropractor for that matter, probably. So if, how long, so I've, I've got pain in my knee and I don't have an MRI machine in my backyard or even an x-ray. How long should I go with this pain kind of straightening my knee at my desk and laying off the mountain and and I still have knee pain? How long should I go before I say, hey, there's something wrong. I need to see a doctor for this. If it's persisting more than a week and you're having any type of swelling or mechanical symptoms such as catching or locking and it, and it just doesn't seem like it's turning the corner with this rest, ice, elevation, uh, anti-inflammatories, changing your activity a little bit, avoiding the squatting positions. And if it doesn't get better, then contact your provider, whether it be your primary care, your chiropractor, your physical therapist, or your physician uh, to be evaluated. 
When would I skip primary care and go straight into uh, orthopedic surgeon? If I've had it a long time or if it's real severe, or, or how would I know, hey, my primary care doctor is a great guy, but he's not actually gonna help me with this. Right, and uh, so what I would say is if you're having mechanical symptoms where your knee is mechanically locking, catching, giving out, and you're having swelling, those are probably better uh, times to go see your orthopedic right off the bat. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's kind of an ache and a pain, the primary care physician can prescribe an anti-inflammatory. If it's more mechanical symptoms, that's where you call the surgeon because the surgeon is there to fix mechanical problems. And every time you see a, a, an orthopedic surgeon, there are a lot of things, I would say 90% of the things we can do to get you better without surgery. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about that. Um, in, in some small percentage of people, 10% or so, surgery is going to be necessary. How do I know, and the way I know if I need surgery, I assume you're going to tell me is, I saw an orthopedic surgeon and he told me I needed surgery. And would that be based on an MRI or x-rays or what what kind of, and the physical exam? Can you just run me through that evaluation or what, what would be required? Yeah, so you go to the orthopedic surgeon's office. Uh, the orthopedic surgeon would evaluate you, find out where it hurts, find out what bothers it, what makes it worse, what makes it better, what you've tried. Uh, then do an examination of the knee, and if it localizes to the patellofemoral area, the kneecap, or the area behind the kneecap, uh, you could you would order x or X-rays in the office to see if there was uh, pre-existing arthritis, if the alignment was appropriate, the bone quality, et cetera. And then if there was a suspicion of, of more of a mechanical problem, uh, then you would possibly order an MRI. MRIs don't hurt. There's usually no needles involved typically for a knee. Uh, so the MRI would be taken and then review that with your orthopedic surgeon and uh, surgery would be indicated if you fail the non-operative measures that we talked about, such as physical therapy, such as anti-inflammatories and rest. And the MRI showed evidence of, of a lesion that could be addressed surgically. But as I said, a lot of the time patellofemoral issues can resolve without surgery. It's more the meniscal or ligament injuries that that, that lead to surgery because those, those issues are harder to uh, treat not operable. So you would say patellofemoral uh, pathology actually does heal on its own in the majority of cases given enough time and that time is is somewhere in the three to six week category would you say or even up to 12 weeks? Yeah it's, it's usually you know a couple to six weeks is most okay. of them sometimes it needs a little more physical therapy it depends on uh, you know the, the patient's uh, compliance and, and just how they feel, you know, how bad the injury is and, and how long they've been put, been beating it up, so to speak. And then the reverse would also be true. If I'm a patient and I've been in physical therapy or chiropractic care for three months, I'm done, right? There's, it's time to see an orthopedic surgeon. They, they had their chance to make me better and I should have healed by now. So really we need to start thinking about moving on and, and looking at other things. Sure. Well, okay, you're a sports medicine fellowship trained surgeon who does these operations. What, tell us, what do you see when you go in there through the arthroscope, you make a tiny nick incision or is it more than one incision? What happens when you go in there? What do you see and what do you do? So as you said, I'm a, a fellowship trained board certified orthopedic surgeon with a specialty in uh, orthopedic sports medicine. Uh, so we, we make these incisions and the incisions are literally, you know, less than a centimeter in size or typically two incisions. Uh, when you go inside the knee and I'll use this model as an example, hopefully you can see this as we look behind it, you'll see here that this, uh, there's a small lesion here. This yellow mm -hmm. is basically what we might see where you've worn down some of the cartilage in some area. This is another example right here. This area in between is healthy as is this area over here. So we might in that arthroscope. Uh, on the TV screen, see this lesion, and if this lesion uh, has, a, if this is the bone, you might have this tissue where this is a flap of tissue that's coming up and getting caught, and that lesion can be debrided and smoothed off so it's no longer catching. I, I refer to it as peeling paint. Uh, mm. Hopefully most people have seen what peeling paint looks like. It tends to pull off in bigger pieces if it's left alone, so if you sand it down, so to speak, with peeling paint, uh, it prevents, prevents further delamination. So with this procedure, uh, we do something similar. We debride it. Uh, we might, might need to uh, uh, get cells from your body and send them off uh, to grow to bring back for a cartilage transplant procedure. I'm involved in uh, two FDA clinical trials uh, with cartilage transplant. One's out of Italy, one's out of Sweden, uh, where we actually take stem cells out of your pelvis, uh, put them in a sponge, and in this defect that you see here, uh, we transplant 
that sponge into that defect that's impregnated with stem cells, and then that regrows cartilage. So that's an interesting study that we've started for the last uh, year and a half uh, with the FDA. It's in phase three clinical trials. It's been done in Europe for since 2000, has great track record. And then a second clinical trial we started is using uh, actual uh, custom uh, computer designed implant to fit into that defect. So it's not using cells, it's using uh, metal and it's custom made to fit that that exact defect that you see here. And we just mill it out and put that defect or put that metal uh, implant in to fill in that defect. And the results have been out also uh, since 2000 in Europe with over 800 cases with great results as well. So those are two interesting different ways to treat it, not necessarily first line treatment for this, of course, but we have a lot of tools in the toolbox that we can fix this problem. That is super exciting. <clears throat> I mean, it almost feels like we're reversing aging with some of these, especially, I mean, the metal would be great, but one day, God, can you just imagine you could put some stem cells in there and regrow the cartilage in the knee, how many lives that would change. If someone's interested in that clinical trial, who, what should they do? Get in touch with the office or is there a website or how do we, how do we go about getting enrolled in that if we're interested? Yeah, so if you if you want to uh, contact my website at az, like Arizona, azorthopedic.com, uh, there's a on there that talks about the different clinical trials with links to the uh, fast track clinical trial, which is the stem cell uh, trial uh, in, that impregnates the sponge we put in there. It's a, it's, it's a biodegradable sponge made out of hyaluronic acid, which is a molecule that's normally found in the joints. And then the uh, Epi sealer or Epic Knee is the other clinical trial that's also referenced on the website as well. That is exciting. We will definitely uh, maybe, you know, we may have to have you back and go over just that trial, review the data and get people more information. That is that is really exciting. Well, Dr. Eifler, I know you're probably <coughs> got an office full of patients getting ready to see you there in the clinic. Um, we're really excited about this uh, article and about everything except running with weights on our ankles, which we won't be trying. Certainly, I will not be trying. But you have a great day, and thanks so much for being with us. I appreciate your time. You as well. Take care. Bye now.